first one, uh, the first one I'll make a presentation about uh, your own trips to try to serve them. My name is Peter Martin, and I have to tell you that five years ago, exactly, oh, sorry, <laughs> there in this room, but in this room, I did a presentation about Raspberry Pi, and it was my first German day, German uh, Joomla day ever. Uh, back then, my hair was a bit longer, and I was five years younger. And if you were here, but you can't remember me back then, uh, I was the guy with the Lego. And um, I'm a Joomla volunteer, and uh, besides Joomla, I'm also interested in Linux. I organize a Linux user group in my hometown, Nijmegen. And in my hometown, I also have uh, a company called DB8. And with this company, I uh, offer support and development, like component development, uh, to companies and organizations. Um, one of the things I developed myself for to make it easier uh, to create websites, it's called Options Manager, because I was fed up with options. If you install Joomla, um, you always have to install, uh, configure the options, like I don't want to see the author and the date in my messages, in my e articles. So I created for myself Options Manager and I decided to release it. It's a, a component where you can export all the options of all your components and modules and templates and plugins. And you can import them in new websites so you don't have to click all the things all the time. Besides this, I'm also a co-founder of Data2. And with, code, with Data2, we have an online tool to create a processing index that you need uh, to fulfill uh, the necessities of the GDPR. Right. Before I start this presentation, I have to make a, a small disclaimer. First of all, I will show at the end of the presentation uh, a bit of command line code. So don't be afraid of this. And in this presentation, no servers have been harmed. And something else, I will mention the Raspberry Pi again, but I don't really brought it with me. And I skipped the Lego part. I don't have Lego with me either. If you have questions, if you have questions, um, it's okay to ask them in German. I can understand German, but I will respond in English. So this is what I will tell you about in this presentation. And I will start with the hosting types first. So we probably all have a website. Who doesn't have a website themselves? Okay, then this audience is okay. So most of us probably uh, have used shared hosting. Maybe some of us still have shared hosting. And with shared hosting, you have a server that has multiple users. There are some disadvantages, like the hosting company sets it up and they decide uh, what uh, software you run uh, and all the accounts run the same software. So you have no choice in the configuration. Uh, my shared hosting is like this. I have a domain name somewhere uh, that points uh, to a server that has email, FTP, PHP my admin, and simple statistics. And I run Apache, MySQL, and the PHP version is determined by my host. Uh, I think it's 7.1 on one of the servers. And with HD access, you can override the settings. So on the other side of the spectrum, uh, you have dedicated hosting. Um, yesterday, Harald Leitner did a presentation about um, <coughs> dedicated hosting. And he told about all the stuff that, uh, that you have to take care of. Um, with dedicated hosting, you are owner of the server and you can install everything you want. But um, it's expensive and you probably don't use it optimally because you maybe only need a part of the thing you bought. In between of shared hosting and virtual private server, you have the VPS, the virtual private server. And with virtual private server, you have a sort of virtual machine where you install everything that you need. So you can determine all the software that you run on your website. If you look at it, this uh, diagram, you can see HW means hardware. And on the hardware, it says Windows, but I would not recommend it. I would recommend Linux. And it's the operating system of the whole machine itself. But on top of it, there is a VMM, meaning Virtual um, Machine Manager. And with it, it has different operating systems, different sort of containers where you can install your operating system and everything you want on the server. 
if you have multiple of those servers, multiple private services, and you use all the services for different things, like you have one for a virtual machine for a database, another for a website, another one for a mail server, then you can talk about virtual private cloud. But it's just exactly the same as VPS, only different ones, only doing one thing. So, um, before you start um, with doing your own virtual private server, you have to think about some consequences and some things you have to decide. So why would you want to, to start a VPS? Yeah, I know why I want to, uh, want to have one. It's because I want to be independent. I want to be able to install everything myself. And I recommend to practice first and not on a customer's website, but uh, use a hobby website as something. And you have to decide how to manage your VPS because there are different options. I will tell you about those later. After you have made all those decisions, you have to choose a host. Then, when you have chosen a host, create an account, set up your VPS, and start. Oh yeah, you have to connect a, a domain name to your VPS, and then it will be publicly available. The difficulties I ran into uh, with my VPS, um, I was using, uh, I, I wanted to use direct admin but it was only available for CentOS at my hosting company. And <coughs> I use Debian because I like it. So another thing is Nginx is a web server. It's faster than Apache. However, you can't use HD access overrides. So you have to do it yourself in other things, in, in virtual domain configuration. I have always problems with email. And it's very, very difficult to set up, to maintain, to create backups, to do anti-spam. It takes a lot of efforts, and what I do, I use an external IMAP server, and on Joomla I just install the PHP uh, mailer, so Joomla can send email, and that's the last one. Uh, when I st started, I didn't have local mail server, so I was not able to send any email. So, regarding the practice. Mm -hmm. You can sit over there if you like. Uh, yeah, but I have here. I have everything here, so and I need to do a demo. No, I don't want to sit down. <laughs> Please sit there. Yeah. So, uh, uh, three things, uh, three things, three things that you can do <laughs> to practice. First of all, um, you can set up your local machine, your local PC, uh, install virtual machine. Maybe virtual box with Vagrant so you can manage it, or Docker, but it's no fun. I mean, it's just like using WAMP or MAMP or XAMP or whatever AMP and run the uh, websites on your computer. So, yeah, I prefer to have it on another thing somewhere else, and uh, Docker is the same thing. But if you put it on something else like uh, VPS, uh, it's really cheap. Um, I'll tell you about it later. You can install it remote and check everything. Just to practice with a hobby site is nice to start with. Or, of course, Raspberry Pi. If you use a Raspberry Pi, you have all those limitations, like uh, the memory is really uh, small, uh, it's not really fast, and you have a lot to do a lot of decisions, but you can do everything yourself, and you will learn a lot about it. So, the Raspberry Pi. Um, the one I brought here was $35, and they are still $35. Uh, they only became somewhat faster. Uh, in March 2018, there were 19 million devices sold, which is really great, because with so many devices, there's also a lot of documentation and tutorials available for this device. So the presentation I did here was about running Joomla on the Raspberry Pi, and that means I have to install Linux, I have to install Apache or a web server, MySQL and PHP. And Apache was really slow, so I started to use Nginx. Um, this presentation will be available after the, pre uh, after the presentation, I mean the sheet, and you click, can click all the blue links in it. So you can see the presentation I did here. Things I ran into when I had this Raspberry Pi and I connected it to the internet, to my router, there was no domain name connected to it. Um, and already I saw unauthorized login attempts. 
people who try to connect to my IP address try to log in on the SSH port using root as username and whatever password they tried. Um, it was really a lot, so I had to install a firewall. I used IP tables, and I also installed fail to ban. Fail to ban is really nice. You can have a sort of program, analyze your log files, and you determine or you specify suspicious behavior. Like on my website, it would be really weird if people try to open wplogin.php. I mean, that's for WordPress websites, and I have Joomla websites on my hosting. So that's suspicious behavior on my system. So therefore, I block those people who try that on my system. Another thing besides security is performance. And you have to improve your uh, stuff. And how I improved the speed of my Raspberry Pi was uh, by using Joomla Cache, by using Nginx. I used APC, which is alternative PHP caching. This was in PHP 5. These days, you don't need APC. You can use OP Cache. And I used Memcache. But these days I use Redis, but I come to that later. So, um, ah, this is nice. But now you, you, this is a Raspberry Pi, by the way. And now I'm really, uh, yeah, I can only look at it now. <laughs> no. So, um, managing a Raspberry Pi, you have to take a couple of decisions. Uh, I'm sorry, managing a VPS, you have to, co uh, to choose a couple of decisions. First of all, would you like to? Uh, choose a managed VPS or unmanaged. If you choose for managed, then you have a hosting company, you pay a lot of cash to them. It, I think it starts with about 50 euros a month and they keep your operating system up to date. The problem is you don't have root access, so you are not the, the master on your own server. You can also do unmanaged, but then it's a DOI or do it yourself. Uh, I chose the do it yourself method. And if you do unmanaged, you have to make another decision. Would I like to use the CLI, the command line prompt, or um, would I like to use uh, a GUI, a graphical user interface? I like the, uh, the command line because I'm more in control. I can do everything myself. I have to manually install and configure stuff. And at the end of the presentation, I show a method to do it in a more proper way. The graphical user interface, if you chose choose that, uh, it's easy to manage. Um, it's just click, click, click on, uh, on screens, just like Joomla. It's, it's easy to manage articles in Joomla because, yeah, you can click, you can see stuff. It's the same with graphical user interface for hosting. You can, if you have to choose, for, if you want to choose uh, a graphical interface, there are three kind of options. A software as a service, like Run Cloud, that needs Ubuntu servers. So you log in into uh, an account on Run Cloud, and then you can manage your own server that's somewhere else. However, uh, yeah, that's not the command line, but it's, it's, it's nice. I don't have experience with server pilot and ploy, but I heard about them. You can also use uh, commercial software like uh, Direct Admin, Plesk or cPanel. If you want to more to know about Plesk, just bother Victor Vogel, he's somewhere here. He knows about it a lot, he works there. You can also go for free software like ISP config or something else. The problem with those packages is they make the decisions for you yourself and you have limited options. And in the case of IP, ISP config, it's free, but if you want to use SSH per client, so different logins, you have to buy a, a, a small fee and uh, I mean a commercial add-on. So let's assume you have chosen uh, your way of managing a server, then you have to cho choose a host. So I told you that I had a Raspberry Pi and I was experimenting with it, but it was not really fast and I wanted to have a faster machine. So I looked around, I found Linode or Linode. It's a US company and they have excellent documentation. It's uh, rather cheap and they have also servers in Frankfurt and in London. I used the one in London, and back then I used uh, Amazon AWS EC3 for the backups. There is also another company that's very famous for their uh, virtual private servers, it's Digital Ocean. I have no experience with them, but they have excellent documentation. If I run into problems and I Google, I sometimes, I often come 
on the website of uh, DigitalOcean. In 2013, who knows what happens in 2013, besides me doing the presentation of Wesley Fry here. Um, in 2013, um, Edward Snowden uh, came with the news that the American uh, government, American agencies were spying on all customers and all people uh, uh, that were using American hosting companies, etc. So I was using Linode, which is US, and I decided I don't want to be spied by the American government. I want uh, I go to the Netherlands. So now I have uh, my hosting in the Netherlands. Uh, I use Dila, and now only the Dutch government is probably spying on me. Um, this one is cheap, and they have uh, servers in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, it's more expensive than uh, Lino de Tila, but for me it's, it felt better. So my setup over there in 2014, Debian 8, Nginx, MySQL, PHP 5. And a couple of years later, I was running MariaDB, which is uh, equivalent of MySQL, but more by, backed by open source, Nginx and PHP 7. So I currently also use Let's Encrypt. That's a really nice method to create SSL certificates for your website. So everything is HTTPS. And I was looking for other hosting companies and I heard about a company called Hetznark. Um, yesterday I heard, I heard somebody also about it. They have servers in Nuremberg. So I tried it and I will show how to create an account with Hetznark. Uh, by the way, I, have no, I don't have any affiliations with them, besides I'm a customer of them. So, to create an account, you go to the website, there's a login, and also um, a register now. And if you have registered an account, then you can create a project. And in this case, I call, I call it 8DB. My, my name is DB8, so it, I, I find it funny to use another name there. Um, I wanted to, to create a server, so I had to choose a location. Uh, I can choose of, about Nuremberg, uh, Falkenstein, and Helsinki. And also, uh, in my case, I chose Debian. But why did I choose for Nuremberg? Um, Hetzner has three data centers, and what I did for my local office, most of my customers are in the Netherlands. So, from my local office in the Netherlands, I did ping to the um, server of Hetzner in Nuremberg. And it had a, a, a um, how do you say, a response time of 11 milliseconds. When I did the same for uh, Falkenstein, it was 14 milliseconds. And when I did the same for Helsinki, it was 30. So I think it's obvious that I chose the, the fastest one. And after that, I had to choose a package. I just, because I was testing it, I chose the cheapest one. And in case I need to upscale, it's easy. I think it's always easier to upscale than to downscale. So. I chose this one. You can some, do something with volumes. I don't have experience with that. Uh, you can do something with backup use data. I don't have any backups to put back. I don't know how to use that. But I was using SSH keys. If you have an SS, who, know, who knows public, private SSH keys? Who uses them? Four, five, okay. So if you have to log in at some place, um, you use a username and password. But with a public private key, you have a private key on your own computer. And when you log in on the other computer, uh, your open rating system will select the private key. Um, and it will check it with the public key that's on the other side. So it will, it will get the other side, it will compare it. And if uh, it's you, if, it's, if it matches, you have entry on the other side. So I added my uh, keys here from two different computers. And I uh, came up with a fancy name. It's just a default name uh, it creates for you. And I buy, I, I, I create a buy. I have to pay using PayPal or I think credit card. Then you have a server. And this server has an IP address. And when you click on it, you can see a lot of things. Here you have SSH login. But most of the time I first have to go to a rescue to reset my password because um, when I cho cho chose um, uh, um, an image, it set back the image, but I didn't see any password anywhere, so just reset it and you have your own password for the root. 
Besides these things, I also connected um, a domain name, in this case, 8db.nl, and I added um, the IP4 and the IP6 address in the DNS. So now I can go uh, to 8db.nl. So, the first thing um, is done. So you have your VPS, yay. Um, it doesn't do anything, it's just a VPS, just a machine somewhere, or even it's virtual. So you have to set up some software over there. So uh, it has already um, Debian 9, but I want to install Nginx and other software. But I have to tell you something about um, security. Um, you can log in in my server at the moment using root at hdb.nl. You have to know the password, or in my case, you have to have the, the, the private key that matches with the public key. Root login is not secure. You all know the story. Don't use admin in your Joomla website. Yes? The password login disabled, that's password No, it's not by default disabled. You have to disable it. But it's indeed a good, good thing. You have to disable, disable root login. Um, that's safer. The best thing, create a known user and a normal user. You just log in into the SSH with your normal user and when you are normal user logged in, you escalate to the root using uh, SU. Uh, the other thing is passwordless. I already told you about it. So, on the new server, I'm logged in as a root. I added myself using add user Peter so now there is a user called Peter on the server, and using uh, fee sudo, I defined that Peter uh, should also be able to run the sudo command, so uh, it could install stuff. And on my local machine, I did ssh copy id, and then I copied my public um, key to the server. And then it will be added, to uh, the home uh, Peter uh, SSH authorized keys. So I will be able to log in with, without any password. Oh, and then I disabled the root uh, uh, login. So the first thing, I did apps update app upgrade to update uh, the current version of everything. And then I just installed stuff. So you have to do it all manually. And then when you are installing your website, you have to do other things manually, like maybe you want to have multiple websites on the same server. So what you do, you create a new folder. For instance, I might want to have a website called 2.8db.nl. I just create a folder, I put uh, stuff in it, for, uh, I mean files, and I have to uh, be sure that the files and the folder are from a certain user and a certain owner. So I create a, an owner and a group. And I assign the folder to it. After that, this is really important, if you use Nginx or Apache, the best thing on your own virtual private server is to create um, a special pool uh, called a PHP FPM pool. Um, there it's defined that PHP will run under a certain user and it's only a, a, a only that user can access your files. So if you have multiple websites, they can, can cannot get uh, to each other. Then you have to create a virtual domain. And in the virtual domain, you say, uh, oh yeah, uh, it's in a certain path, like uh, far www, <coughs> nginx, sites available, and then the name of your uh, site. In it, you define the server name. So it listens to the name to 8db.nl if the co uh, server traffic comes in. The second thing you have to define is where are the files of this website stored. And finally, um, you have to um, configure fast CGI to listen to your PHP pool that you just created. So the website will only listen to that process. And you have to enable it, otherwise uh, Nginx doesn't know it's there. And the third thing, with Joomla you have a database. Uh, and Per website, use uh, an own, its own database. So uh, your own database, own username, own password. So it's all different. To improve your website speed, always use PHP 7. By the way, PHP 5 is end of life anyway this year, at the end of this year. 
I would recommend to use OP cache. It makes it faster. You could use Varnish, but my uh, I have a more of hate relationship with Varnish. Um, Varnish is difficult when you have people trying to log in on the front end. Uh, what I like is Redis. Then the part about security. Backups are really important. I create database backups, uh, files with rsync, and also with Akiba backup. And you can scan your uh, server with Linus. It is a tool that checks all kinds of things that you need to, have, need to do with um, uh, security. And with monitoring, there are different tools that you can use uh, to monitor your server. So this is a bit hard to do. I mean, I just created the website called 2 dot hdb.nl but what if I want to create three or four or five or hundred or whatever you have to do it manually and it's a lot of work uh, if you look if you use graphical user interface it's they automate stuff for you but you can automate it yourself using the command line so what did I do to automate what would you do to automate stuff <laughs> Good thinking, good thinking. You will write a script and what kind of language would you like? Bash, Bash shell, yeah. Bash shell is really nice, really good. Um, and one of my friends in the Linux community is indeed doing it this way, uh, which is good if it works. Uh, but I stumbled on Ansible. And Ansible, Bash script is, is great. Ansible is awesome. <laughs> so, um, Ansible is a configuration management and provisioning tool written in Python. By the way, but if you have something else, maybe if you use Puppet or Salt or Chef, it's similar. Ansible is written in Python and you run it, oh yeah, you create recipes and in a recipe uh, you define which host you want to install stuff to. You have to define roles, like maybe you have a database or a PHP server. Yeah, you can define variables, like I have 2.8db, 3.8db, etc. all the, the website you want to have. And you can create templates, like you have maybe a small piece of code that you want to install on every server. And it runs on SSH. So the same with Bash. This also runs on SSH, but you run it locally, and it will upload all the things remotely. So you use SSH, but you run it locally. So let me say, shall we look at some code? So this is really, really easy for you. It's just PHP. This is a small script without any variables that I want to add to the server. And I will demo it after my presentation. This is a host file. Just a file, a text file. And it says 8db with the server IP address and a couple of other uh, sites that I might want to install stuff to and um, this is the Ansible script I have to tell you my script my example script is not the best example that you can use I mean it's all in one script it's just like writing Joomla uh, a component everything in one script um, you should divide, uh, divide it like Joomla has a few controller models here you have uh, uh, your variables your handlers, your uh, everything, you, you should separate it. Anyway, uh, I will install everything to 8db as a host. My username is pe7r, and when it installs stuff, it should become the root user. And then I also have some, a couple of, couple of uh, variables, like uh, which kind of PHP repos I want to add. Uh, I install only two PHP packages this time. When you want to use Joomla, you need more. You need XML, ZIP, uh, SOAP, CLI, all kinds of PHP packages. This is just for this demo. Um, then it says the task it should do. The first task, it should install Nginx as a web server. And when it's installed, it should notify and enable Nginx. The second thing is, it should add the repos, the repos to my remote computer and my server. I should also download a, a GPG key, so it's able to uh, download um, software from other servers. And also, 
um, I add an, another um, repo to my source file because, um, well, Debian is really great, but it's uh, a bit old. I mean, they are really stable and therefore they have old software in it. So at the moment it's still PHP 7.0. And if you want to have 7.1 or 7.2, you need to install this. It will update the repo and after that it will install all the packages I defined. And finally, it will create an index HTML. So with bash you would do a copy or a move or whatever. And here you do just you say I have a file. The source is index.j2 because it's uh, in my template called J2. And this is the destination and it will put it over there. And finally, a couple of other handlers like start nginx and enable nginx. And this is it, just to install uh, software on the server. And you run it by Ansible Playbook. With the I, you can define which host file you use. If you don't specify I, you use the global one. So Ansible on your system will have a folder with the configuration and then you could put it over there and you can get rid of the host. In this case, I'd have the host because it's here for this. And then the YAML file, which has all the installation stuff. So uh, are there any questions now? Otherwise I will do the demo if you like. Okay, so let's do the demo. Okay, so the first thing I have to do, I have to go uh, to the, I will be there in a minute. So, um, when I log in, I will show the whole screen. <laughs> so, this is my, so, no. It's small, but uh, here you can see what I also showed in the sheet. Uh, I have this server uh, created 13 days ago. And if I open it, um, let's assume I already installed it and I messed up. Well, with the VPS, it's really easy. You just do a rebuild. You choose a uh, operating system, in my case Debian 9. I do rebuild and now you have to triple double chip triple check if it's the right server otherwise you're yeah so I say okay the JD 18 DE I would like to rebuild it so now it's rebuilding it at the same time I would like to create another so it's there and I do eight Oh, yeah, that doesn't work. This doesn't work either. Because there is no server yet over there. I mean, there is a VPS server, but no web, no web server. So, it's done. It's rebuilt. Um, next time, the next thing I do is... Um, uh, I'm here on my clear... I'm here on the command line. Um, I will log in into the VPS using my uh, root. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, root at 8db.nl. Uh, it's a bit. No. So it says something like um, there is already uh, um, a known key. And it was from the, from the previous server, and because I changed something over there, uh, I have to uh, remove it here. So I removed the old, old one, and now I can log in. Uh, I don't have to add any password now, because 
I already added my um, public key to the server. And when I install a new uh, uh, environment, my public key is automatically added. So I can log in as root, but yeah, I have to disable this. <laughs> so the first thing is add user and I add my user to it. I have to think about the password. So I have a, a password. I get a couple of questions and I uh, say everything is correct. And now I have a user. I can show it like if I go to a CD home and I do LS, you can see that PE7ER is a folder there. So the user has been created. And if I go to Uh, you can see there is no SSH folder yet. So what if I do, I go back to my own system. Um, oh, I forgot something. Well, it doesn't matter. I just do SSH, copy ID. Uh, yeah. So now it says, shall I copy your uh, key? Okay, yes, I can. And I have to add the password I just created on the server. So now I'm logged in. But uh, I can show you. Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. I, I only copied my, my phone. So I log in at as root. Uh, now I'm logging as root, and I have to do something. I have to tell that the uh, user Peter uh, should be able to uh, run stuff as a uh, root. So I do uh, su sudo. And with food, this is a file, and I just copy the root and I say all is all now password all and if I save it and I go back if I try to log in as a my username I should be able to log in without adding my password now so now my system is ready to run Ansible scripts as well but I can also do um, So now I try to install Nginx manually. So now it, it installs Nginx. So I will have a web server that has been installed manually and I can check it because if I go to my uh, website, HTTP, Nginx, yay, Nginx is installed. But this is really the manual way. So the more professional way is, um, on my local system I have a, a, a repository with a JD18DE and it has the uh, main.yaml I just showed you in my uh, presentation and the thing I have to do now is um, Ansible playbook I want my host file that's here uh, listed over there and I do uh, main.yaml because that's the name of the of the yaml file with the configuration for Ansible and now I can uh, host, is that a host? 
Thank you very much. I, I, was, I was wanted to say, now I can go for a beer, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, there is an, an error again with the, with the key. And I have to run this. So, hosts, yes. <laughs> so now uh, it will uh, do all the things I uh, commanded it in the Ansible uh, uh, YAML file. And now I can go for a beer. <laughs> so first of all, it will install Nginx's web server, then uh, a PHP, then it will download the GDP uh, key, it will add uh, the to the repo list, <coughs> then it will do the update, the update of the operating system. Now it will do install all the packages, and after that it will install the uh, Joomla DA uh, template file that is just an index of F, uh, HTML. It's this index, HTML, DA, and now it's done. So you can see, okay, eight things have been done. Five have, of the were okay, they were already installed, like Nginx was already installed. But um, other things were just installed for the first time, so, uh, and you also have the change below. But if I go to my website, it said, welcome to Nginx, but I replaced the file with, hello Joomlers. Oh, hello Joomlers in Nuremberg. So this was the file in my Ansible repository that has been added to the uh, server now. This is really a small example what you can do with Ansible because imagine if you use Ansible and you have a file where you can uh, specify the domain name, the database name, the FP, uh, PHP, FPM pool, um, everything. And then uh, when you create a new uh, file with uh, new hosting uh, things like a new domain name etc, you just run Ansible and only the changes will be uh, committed. So we will just create the new websites on the server. So um, I hope that I have given you a small insight in hosting of VPS and what you can do uh, if you want to go uh, the, the manual, I mean the command line way uh, using Ansible. Um, are there any questions? Uh, yes? Uh, can you use Ansible for managing multiple servers? I'm sorry? Can you use Ansible uh, for managing a whole bunch of servers? For example, if I have 10 web servers and I yes. want to change all the servers the same thing that I can... Uh, the, question is, the question is, uh, can you use Ansible for managing more uh, web servers at the same time? Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, you have to specify it in the host file. I mean, I now I specified host. And it set just one IP address, but I can list ten, and then I will do ten different. Other questions? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. A backup. Uh, the question is, uh, can I use Ansible to create uh, backups? Um, I have no idea. I, I have no, I don't think so. Um, Ansible, yeah, you can, yes. With Ansible, you can configure how to create backups, but uh, the backups should be done with the cron tab. In a cron tab, you uh, run a script, and the script will do the backups. But with Ansible, you can configure the server with a script. So Ansible is just for configuring it, and a cron tab will run your own script. Other questions? Yes? Um, this is Linux Nijmegen. And if I just go, I, I don't know why it took a bit longer. But if I just go to one of those, it's not 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 slow or something. I'm sorry. The Wi-Fi connection. The Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. 
Um, something else then. Uh, it's uh, six. Oh, it's uh, not really uh, fast. I don't know why. I mean, I'm in Nuremberg. The server is in Nuremberg, <laughs> and the speed the speed is uh, slower than uh, when I did it from my office. Ah, okay. <laughs> this is at Hetzner or on Tyler. This is uh, Hetzner. Yeah. Uh, the other one on a Tyler. Same, so I think it's something with the connection here. Anyway. Yes, yes. Yeah. Just use it to experiment. Or choose your own host. Just just try something. And you, yeah. Okay. Uh, time is up, I heard. Uh, so uh, thank you for your attention.